All right, Year 9, just going to have a look at the work that we did today because there's a fair number of students away and uh, some people might have had some trouble dealing with this. We're really into the part where it's starting to get hard. We're now going to start dealing now with fractional indices. So fractional indices. So let's have a look at what we're dealing with here. So let's start with a number. Let's start with root 4. Now we know the square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 gives me 4. And when I square root, I'm trying to find the same number that or the number that multiplies by itself to give the number inside. So let's take another number. 25. And I know the square root of 25 is 5. So that's 5 times 5. Okay. Well, let's take the square root of A. Well, I need a number that when multiplied together, now remember that's a to the 1, that when multiplied together will give me a to the 1, and it's got to be the same number. So, for example, I could have, and we know our power laws, a to the 3rd and a to the 2 thirds, and I know that when I multiply them together, I'll get a to 1 third plus 2 thirds, which will give me 1, but I can't do that because they're not the same number. It must be the same number. So what can I do? What fraction can I put in there that will give me that? And it will be a half. It has to be the same one. And a half plus a half is one. So the square root of a is a to the half. Now that's very important. The square root of a equals a to the half. What about, and we can have high powers, the cube root. Well, let's go back and look at a few numbers. The cube root of 8. Well, that's 2 times 2 times 2. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 27. Well, 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. Well, what about the cube root of A? Well, again, I need a number. A, A, and a that will add up or give me a to the one and it has to be the same and immediately you're going oh well that'll have to be a third that'll have to be a third because they have to be the same and that'll have to be a third so the cube root of a is a to the third and you're starting to think to yourself well this looks pretty familiar whatever Whatever number, and by the way, there's a 2 there, but we don't write it. Whatever number is on the bottom of the fraction, that tells me the root. So now we can make a rule, a new rule. A, or the nth root, so whatever root of A, is A 1 over N. And that is a rule that we need for today's work all right for today's work that's what we learned so if i had the sixth root of 10 well that's 10 to the power of 1 over 6. well let's have a look at some of the questions we did today and we started here 
with question four. And we only did the last two columns. So here we go. Five to the power of a third. Well, that's the cube root of five. I'm going to do just um, this second last column. And those people who are doing these at home can do the last column. And then the answers are on the web. Well, let's go 9 to the power of a ninth. Well, that's the ninth root of 9. Oh, wow. What if I've got to go the other way? So that's question 4, C and G. What about 5, C? The cubed root of 10. If I'm going to write that as an indice, well, that's 10 to the power of 1 over 3. G, the 8th root of 11. Well, that's 11 to the power of 1 over 8. Wow, this, this rule is really cool. Remember, here is the rule. A to the power of 1 over N is the nth root of of A. So, do you know, do you know your squares and cubes? So, for example, 6C. Without a calculator, 81 to the half. Well, that's a square root of 81, and I know that that's 9. 6G. 125 to the third. Well, that equals the cube root of 125. And if you know your cube numbers, you'll know that without a calculator, that that's 5. 5 times 5 times 5. 6K. 625 to the power of a quarter. Well, that is the fourth root of 625. And again, I know that's five. Okay, so now we're getting a bit hard. Now we're going to seven. Remember, I'm doing the second last column. If you are having a go at these or watching these, you should also be doing the last column, which we did in class. So A to the power of two thirds times A to the power of four thirds. Well, this just invokes our previous law, A to the power of M times A to the power of N. Add the indices, A to the M plus N. What's two thirds plus four thirds? Well, this is just a fraction. Leave the denominator alone. And two plus four is six. Hey, but I know that six divided by three, that'll be a to the power of two. Okay, that one was easy. What about seven G? I've got x to the power of 7 on 6 divided by x to the power of 2 on 6. Well, this one uses our rule a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. We subtract the powers a to the m minus n. And how did you know it was division? Well, the vinculum just means division. So now I subtract the powers. And again, it's the same. Leave the denominator alone. 7 minus 2, 5 on 6. And leave it like that. Leave it as 5 on 6. K. Well, this is our power of a power law. And we get y to the power of a half to the 3. Well, that's y to the half times 3. And I know that you're going to write, want to write y equals one and a half, but can you just write three over two? It'll make it so much easier later on if you can do that.
let's look at O. And we've got A to the power of 3 on 4 to the power of a half. Well, we multiply the powers again, a to the power of 3 on 4 times a half, which gives me a to the power of 3 on 8. So what are we up to? Question 8. Now, we did all of these. I'm just going to do ACE. ACE. And I'm just checking my last one, O, A to the power of 3 out. Beautiful. So here's question 8. And what have I got? A to the half times A to the fifth. A to the half times A to the fifth. Well, what have I got to do? I need to make, if I'm going to add those two fractions together, I've got to make a common denominator. And the common denominator will be 10. So I'm going to write a to the power of 5 on 10. I multiplied top and bottom by 2 with the first one. Times a to the power of 2 on 10. I multiplied top and bottom by 5. Add those together and I get a to the power of 7 on 10. Please don't get a to the power of 7 on 20. Do not add the denominators. And there's the first one. I said I would do a, c, e. You can do b, d, f. A to the power of a half times, uh, oh, sorry, I did B. So I better do BD, BDF and you do ACE. So D, A to the power of 5 divided by A to the 7 on 3. Well, again, I'm going to make them both the same fraction, 5 plus 7 on 3. I'm going to make that a to the 15 on 3 divided by a to the 7 on 3. Now I can subtract them, both common denominators, which will give me a to the 8 on 3. And please leave it as a to the 8 on 3. And the last one I'm going to do is f. x to the power of 4 on 5 divided by x to the 2 thirds. So I've got B, D, F. So I need a common denominator. Well, the common denominator will be 15. So I'll multiply that one by 3 and I'll get x to the power of 12 on 15. I'll multiply top and bottom by 3. Divided by, and I'll multiply this by 5, and I'll get 10 on 15. Leave the denominators alone, subtract the numerators, and I get x to the power of 2 on 15. Now, it's important that you leave those numerators alone. So that's question 8. Uh, question 9. I... Wouldn't mind doing a quarter. I'll do C and D. You have a go at G and H. So 9C. I've got 32 to the negative a fifth. Well, straight away, the negative tells you it's 1 over the top to 32 to a fifth which is the same as 1 as the fifth root of 32. Now, I happen to know that the fifth root of 32 is 2. So that pops out to be a half. Let's go 81 to the negative a quarter. 81 to the negative a quarter. And this is D. Again, the negative just means 1 over the top. So 81 to a quarter. And I know that that's the fourth root of 81. 
And I just happen to know the fourth root of 81 is 3. So 1 over 3. All right. 12. Uh, again, we did the last column of 12. I'll do B and E. So 12, B. So we did the last two columns. A to the two thirds times A to the negative two thirds. Well, that's pretty easy. Add them. Well, what's two thirds plus negative two thirds? Well, zero. And A to the power of zero is one. Unless, of course, A is zero. E. I've got A to the half to the power of a half divided by a to the quarter. Well, let's deal with that power of a power first. And a half times a half, well, that's a to the power of a quarter. Still got to do the, deal with this a to the power of another quarter. Oh, a quarter minus a quarter of zero. So I get a to the power of zero again. And again, it's one. <clears throat> the last one we did was 14. I'd rather you just do 14G. And I'll do 1 and 3, and you can have a go at 2 and 4. So G number 1. I've got the cube root of A cubed. Well, that just tells me it's a cube root. Well, that's a to the 3 all to a third. Hey, I can just multiply the powers. And what's 3 times a third? A to the power of 1. So the cube root of A cubed is just A. Well, that's interesting. I might have a go at 4. You can do 2 and 3 because it's just the same thing for 3. So 4 is the 6th root of A all to the 6th. Well, the 6th root is A to the 6th. And again, if I power over power, I multiply these, and that'll give me A to the 1. So what we're trying to get at here is we're trying to say that the nth root of a to the n is just a. Or the nth root of a to the n is just a. Either of those will do. All right, so if you're away today, make sure you get the ones that I didn't do done yourself. The answers are on the web.